Tonight, Julia Gillard's shock election announcement. September the 14th is the date. Searchers find the bodies of two men missing in the Lockyer Valley. The flood destruction hits home in Bundaberg, while the rescue heroes are honoured. And some Brisbane suburbs still at risk of running dry while Logan battles isolation. This is 7 News with Sharon Gadella and Bill McDonald. Good evening to the latest on the flood soon, but first Australians will vote in a federal election on Saturday the 14th of September. Julia Gillard says she's given voters eight months notice because they've had enough of playing guessing games. Tony Abbott says his team should be trusted to lead the nation. A new look for what was billed as a new vision for 2013. Instead, blindsiding everyone by announcing the election date almost eight months out. I will advise the Governor-General to dissolve the House of Representatives for an election for the House and half the Senate to be held on Saturday the 14th of September. Seven News. Now to Queensland's flood emergency and in today's developments the number of people confirmed dead has risen to six. Two bodies were found in a swollen creek near Gatton. Brisbane residents have ignored warnings to conserve water with suburbs still at risk of losing supply. And the Premier meets rescue pilots who risk their lives to save others in Bundaberg. As we just mentioned, it's been a tragic day in the flood recovery with two bodies found in a creek. Chloe Baker joins us live from Gatton. And Chloe, do we know what the men were trying to do? We do, Bill. Both men were trying to cross the swollen Sandy Creek while on their way to work. They were both farmhands at a Mulgawi property but were travelling separately. Police say this latest tragedy should ram home the warning to drivers that crossing flooded roads is dangerous. After days of searching, police divers made the grim discovery this morning. The silver sedan was pulled from Sandy Creek at Glencarn, inside a 34-year-old Malaysian man. Andrew Leong worked at the nearby Mulgawi farming company. A death in these circumstances is always tragic, um, and uh, of course... This is from Wyvernhoe and Somerset dams have been increased. Authorities say they're attempting to flush out the river. Patrick Condren is at EMQ headquarters, and Pat, how exactly will that help the water supply? Uh, Bill, uh, those releases of clean water from Wyvernhoe will push uh, all that sediment and soil through the Mount Crosby treatment plant and it appears to have had some effect. Uh, about 10 minutes ago, uh, production of water from that plant had increased to 400 megalitres. Now, in terms of Wyvernhoe, the maximum uh, uh, release uh, of gates uh, happened mid-morning this morning. Uh, that's about, uh, happening at about 1,500 cubic metres per second, which is 1,500 tonnes of water per second coming over the floodgates. And it'll take about four or five days to get the water levels down uh, in the flood mitigation zone. All right, Patrick, thanks for that. In North Bundaberg, the site of Queensland's biggest mass evacuation, authorities have confirmed houses were washed off their stumps. In that suburb alone, 500 residents remain in an evacuation centre. Their homes are still surrounded by water. This is why the people of North Bundaberg were ordered out. The Burnett... This afternoon, the Premier met one of the helicopter rescue crews involved in the aerial operation over Bundaberg on Monday night. Jeff Bruce joins me now live from Bundaberg. And Jeff, who were they? Sharon, the four men were the crew of Emergency Management Queensland Rescue 521. They arrived in Bundaberg on Monday. Piles of debris are now lining flood-affected streets in Brisbane and Ipswich. An ongoing power outage affecting 30,000 properties across the southeast is significantly hindering the recovery effort. In Brisbane, it's manpower versus mud. The brown water has dried up, leaving a familiar stain. Crews mended bridges and patched power lines. 30,000 customers in the southeast still have no electricity. We're just thankful that there's no floodwaters this time. At Orkinflower, community groups were relieved. This year, the worst of the clean-up was removing sandbags and debris. We were most concerned following last flood that we were going to try and mitigate it as much as we could. The worst... And later in 7 News, Shane Webke's emotional tour through flood damage in the Lockyer Valley. But next... The Forgotten Ones, the Moreton Bay Islanders hit hard. 
and the Gold Coast wildlife storm victims. Residents on Brisbane's Bay Islands say they've struggled with isolation and major damage since ex-cyclone Oswald hit. With no power to the majority of homes, many are worried they're running critically low on food. Muddy flood water spilling into Moreton Bay and across to Russell Island, where many residents are without power and now... Gold Coast beaches are being battered by big swell, causing more erosion. For more, we're joined by reporter Bianca Stone, live from our bureau in Surface Paradise. And Bianca, which areas are being hit the hardest? Bill, the worst uh, erosion stretches from Miami to Main Beach. In some parts, scarps are up to five metres high. Fences have been washed away and public access ways need to be rebuilt. But it wasn't just the beaches that copped a battering. Some of our wildlife also needs a little help. Meet Minnie, the orphan koala who lost her home, her mother and almost her life when the storm hit the Gold Coast. We've got it just in time. It's um, re really a bit of a race to get you, you know, all the organs functioning. Again. Sports soon, but coming up, John Schluter with news on more rain. Farmland in ruins, the effect on grocery prices. And Shane Webke's emotional tour through the Lockyer Valley. Welcome back to this hour-long bulletin of 7 News. Shane Webke's visit to the Lockyer Valley shortly. But first, here's John with a quick look at the weather. Thanks, Sharon. Good evening. We've been watching a low in the Coral Sea today. Now, this is not unusual at this time of the year. A series of lows form in the monsoonal trough right across the top end, and there's always the potential uh, for cyclones to form up there. At the moment, though, this is looking pretty good. The low is about 1,000 kilometres east of Cairns, moving east-northeast. It's away from the coast. There's less than a 20% chance of a cyclone forming tomorrow and Friday less than 5% by Saturday and there's no current threat to the Queensland coast at the moment. Now we've had isolated storms around this afternoon. We've got the live radar for you. They've been mostly north of Brisbane uh, and uh, moving up the Gold Coast in the last hour or so. We'll keep you updated with that. The outlook is uh, showers at first tomorrow morning. That'll decrease in the afternoon and it'll be warm again, 30 degrees. Shower at 2 for Friday Then a pretty good weekend coming up. Details coming up later. All right, thank you, John. Three people, including two teenage girls, have been charged with looting at Gympie. It comes as roads start to open and the recovery effort begins for residents and businesses from Wide Bay to the Fraser Coast. The heavy machinery is out, the clean-up is on. But for Maryborough gift shop owner Andrea Hamilton, it's too much to take. As soon as I open that door... The Governor-General has visited flood-affected communities in the Lockyer Valley. Quentin Bryce spent time with volunteers and flood victims in Grantham this afternoon. Several local roads remain cut there. The Governor-General also shared a drink with Laidley locals, taking a break from their clean-up efforts. Cheers, cheers, Eric. <laughs> Good health. <laughs> The Mud Army is already hard at work in Laidley, getting stuck into repairs at a local playground. And Shane Webke has paid a visit to Flood Stricken Laidley as they continue their arduous clean-up. And the Rugby League grade had a special delivery for one family thanks to the generosity of seven news viewers. Because I live in Toowoomba, I go up and down the, the Brisbane to Toowoomba Road all the time. Um, and I drive past the Laidley turn-off and the other day I couldn't get to work and had to go on the helicopter. And I got to see the full extent of this water laying across these, this Lockyer Valley district and just how enormous it was. I grew up near a small Darling Downs town similar to Laidley. I knew they'd be doing it tough. How are you? How are you? How are you? Well, obviously the bars open today. I reckon we'll be, well, we're taking bookings for Friday night for Mouse. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Straight back into it. Yeah, got it, got it. Yeah. You've got to be positive and you've got to keep going, otherwise yeah. you'll fall on a heat boat, eh? Shane Webke, 7 News. <laughs> And Shane, they need all the help we can give them, don't they? They do, Shane, but they're very special people. will not get the better of them. Hello, everyone. Coming up in sport, Warney's blueprint to shake up Australian cricket. The last word on the Gil Mundine super fight. And is this the biggest wave ever ridden? Aussie opener David Warner is having x-rays for a possible fractured finger after being hit during practice in Perth. That news as Shane Warne called for a major overhaul of Australian cricket, claiming a Kiwi should be head coach. 
Warner's anguish was clear as soon as he was hit by Mitchell Johnson. And After a heated and often bitter build-up, the rematch between Daniel Gill and Anthony Mundine is just hours away. Reporter Matt Carmichael is ringside in Sydney. Well, Shane, in just a few hours' time, the Sydney Entertainment Centre will be rocking when these two Australian champions go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's been a build-up like we've never seen before for a sporting event in Australia. American Garrett McNamara may have broken his own record for the biggest wave ever surfed. McNamara claims to have caught a 30-metre monster off the coast of Portugal. It follows the record he set in 2011 when he rode a 24-metre wave at the same spot. Officials are examining video and photographs of the wild ride to confirm whether it's a record. 24 or 30, Sharon, they're too big for me. Doesn't make any difference to me either. <laughs> Thank you, Webby. Now to finance news in the Australian share market closed moderately higher today with investors unfazed by Julia Gillard's announcement of the election date. The ASX 200 was eight points higher. It was a mixed day for insurers with the estimated cost of flooding from ex-tropical cyclone Oswald nearing $200 million so far. Locally, super retail group shares fell while flight centre rose. And the Australian dollar is buying $1.04 US cents. Later in 7 News, John's weather, including a new low pressure system in the Coral Sea. But ahead, why police divers are searching a Gold Coast canal. And the tree full of bees that's caused a suburban storm in Brisbane. Police divers on the Gold Coast are searching for a Korean student feared drowned in a canal at Broadbeach Waters. It's understood the 55-year-old had been drinking with friends at Cascade Gardens last night. They told police they heard a splash just after 11 o'clock. This afternoon, police officers recovered a backpack from the canal containing the man's identification and textbooks. These pictures are just in from Bundaberg. The army has arrived to help the city's flood victims. Soldiers from Inogra left Brisbane this morning. They'll assist in the massive recovery effort ahead. More than 2,000 homes have been affected, some washed from their foundations. Now for the latest from EMQ headquarters, it's live to Assistant Director Bruce Grady and he's with State Political Reporter Patrick Condren. Uh, thanks, Bill. Uh, Bruce, in terms of Wyvernhoe Dam, the uh, floodgates are fully open now. Are you Neil Dawley reporting there. We'll update the key flood development soon, but first, here's John with news on more showers on the way. Well, they won't last too long, Bill, and the weekend forecast is looking pretty good. The details are coming up next. Isolated storms around the southeast this afternoon, affecting areas mostly north of Brisbane. We'll check the latest on that at the moment. There's still a chance of a few more of those around this evening. And we've got some uh, showers developing early tomorrow as well. They won't be lasting too long as we head into the weekend. Things are shaping up to be pretty good with a, a fine, warm couple of days. It's uh, still warm out there, 26 degrees in Brisbane. Humidity is up 82%. And it was a warm night uh, followed by a hot day today around the southeast uh, on the Gold Coast. The range there, 24 to 29 degrees, uh, 25 to 31 in Logan. And just a few millimetres of rain through the day. Ipswich reached 33 into the Sunshine Coast area. And uh, through the afternoon, they'll be mostly northwest of Brisbane. Just the chance of maybe a few isolated cells uh, through the evening. Not too much showing up there than those showers tomorrow morning. But the good thing is we're heading for a, a pretty good weekend, I think. I'd like to hear that. Thank you, John. And more pictures just in now from the devastated town of Bundaberg where the Defence Force has arrived to bolster the flood recovery effort. 209 soldiers from Inogra are setting up a tent city at Salter's Oval. They've brought muscle and machinery and will certainly be needed over the coming days as floodwaters recede and the massive job of recovery begins. Locals have cheered their arrival. And just before we go, a recap of today's major stories. Prime Minister Julia Gillard has announced the federal election date. Australians will go to the polls on September 14. The death toll in Queensland's floods has risen to six. The bodies of two men were found in a creek near Gatton. They went missing on Sunday. The full extent of damage in Bundaberg is now becoming clear. Floodwaters were so strong that homes were washed off their foundations. More than 1,000 residents remain in evacuation centres. And dozens of residents remain isolated after the Logan River peaked at nine metres last night. Extra supplies have been brought in today. And that's just about all in this hour-long edition of 7 News. Thanks again for joining us. We'll have updates throughout the evening. Until then, good night. Good night.